President, ladies, gentlemen, and colleagues, it is an honor and great privilege to present you Linda Hussman. It is impossible to imagine journalists in conflict without thinking of Lindsay, whose reporting for Channel 4 News and almost nightly television presence has made her a household name and a role model for journalists world, world, worldwide, particularly those working on war and conflict. Lindsay Hilson is Channel 4's international editor and the author of two books, In Extremis, The Life of War Correspondent Philip Holbin, and Sandstorm, Libya in the Time of Revolution. For three decades, she has specialized in covering conflict and refugee movement, supporting every continent, far and hard. This year, she has reported on the political and humanitarian crisis in Venezuela, the demise of the Islamic State's caliphate in Syria, human rights abuses in Zimbabwe, and from the front line of the abortion wars in the United States. Lindsay is the recipient of several international awards, including the Royal Television Society Journalist of the Year, the Charles Wheeler Award and the James Cameron Award, as well as the Patience Medal from the Royal Geographical Society and the Mungo Park Medal from the Royal Scottish Geographic Geographical Society. She was rather surprised to get any award for geography since, despite having spent a lifetime traveling, she has no sense of direction, and I'm quoting her. She, <laughs> not me. She is capable of getting lost on a very short journey, for example, from the Channel 4 News Studio on Grace in Road to Soas, a journey of less than a mile. She has, however, made it today. <laughs> Gone are the days when a foreign correspondent was inevitably a white man, intrepidly selling off to, uh, setting off to tell us about them. Instant satellite communication and the proliferation of smartphones have enabled people to tell their own stories. Now growing numbers of people from the global south are reporting for northern media as well as for media in their own country, and I see some of them there. Lindsay is a great supporter of this hugely positive development and is a founder of the Marie Colvin Journalist Network, which supports female journalists in the Arab world and has been a mentor for young journalists through the John uh, Shockfield Trust. After gra graduating in Spanish and French from Exeter University, Lindsay began her career as an aid worker with Oxfam in Central America and then UNICEF in East and Southern Africa. From 1986 to 1989, she was a stringer for the BBC and The Guardian based in Kenya in 1994. She was the only English-speaking foreign correspondent in Rwanda when the genocide started. She joined Channel 4 News in 1997 and spent much of 1999 in Belgrade under NATO bombing and 2003 in Baghdad during the U.S. aid campaign. She has reported extensively from Iran, Iraq, Mali, and Ukraine and was Channel 4 News China correspondent from 2006 to 2008. In 2011, she witnessed the Arab uprisings in Libya and Egypt and spent the summer of 2015 traveling with refugees and migrants through Europe. She has witnessed and helped us understand the most dreadful and violent events that followed the optimism of the New World Order at the end of the 20th century. Her approach to making them understandable to viewers far away has been consistent a focus on the stories of ordinary people involved in or affected by these conflicts, thus remaining true to journalists' most cherished and valuable contrib contribution, speaking truth to power and storytelling that is informative, objective, honest, and empathetic. But Lindsay also likes to tend her North London garden, see friends, go bird watching, horse riding, read poetry, and listen to bad country music. She <laughs> She missed a coup in Egypt once because she had, taken, uh, she had tickets for Bruce uh, Springsteen. <laughs> Lindsay also confesses that her technical skills are rudimentary. She depends on a camera operator and increasingly technically skilled producers to get the story onto the television or the internet. At the end of the day, journalism is uh, practical. Either you get your story out or you don't. And sometimes in remote places, all communications uh, collapse. As she once told an interview, quote, the best thing is to be an eyewitness to the history of time and to hear people's stories. The least rewarding thing is that if the technology lets us down, it's devastating, unquote. Technology can do more than just let us down. It can be used to track down those people exposing atrocities and corruption. 
Hundreds of journalists have been killed, imprisoned, or simply disappeared in conflict zones in the 21st century. The po most prominent in recent times is, of course, Lindsay's friend and colleague Marie Colvin, killed an artillery attack in Syria in 2012, and we know of Jamal Khashoggi and others. Lindsay's biography was an attempt to ensure that Marie was remembered, not just for her tragic death, but also for her extraordinary life. In writing this tribute, I try to think what sums her contribution to journalism. There are many, and time does not allow me to speak at length. But I found this quote, which resonated with my own very short experience as a war correspondent in the Middle East. Addressing young female reporters, she said, and I quote, be confident and do not let boys trample all over you. I think it's an advantage to be a woman. You may fail or screw up, but pick yourself up and keep going. You may occasionally come across people who are disparaging or discriminated because you are a woman. They can sort off. You just have to keep going. You, you have to do things on the same terms, unquote. Madam President, it is my privilege now to present to you Lindsay Tilson for the award of an honorary fellowship of the school and to invite her to address this assembly. Thank you. Thank you. 